My name is Adam Kettner. I'm the Scoutmaster for Troop 193. I'd like to welcome you all to the special court of honor for Eagle Scout Luke Wilson. Before we start, I'd like to recognize some special guests. Selectman Dottie Fulginetti is in the crowd. Selectman Tom Brazad, Jim McAvoy, American Legion Rep, Connor Reed, Senator Walter Timley, and Senator Brady are on their way. And all the veterans in attendance, can you please stand and be recognized? So scouting is a scout-led uh, event, so the, most of the ceremony tonight will be run by Luke Patrick, the senior patrol leader, so take charge of your unit. Will everyone please rise for the colors? Color Guard, present arms. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, color Guard, post the colors. <laughs> Please join us in singing the first verse of our national anthem. You haven't get the key right here. <laughs> oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's early light, what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming with red stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight. O'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave or the Please be seated. We'll now have some comments about the Eagle Project by Jim McAvoy. Okay, I'm going to sing the second verse. Are you ready? <laughs> what are you laughing for? Good morning. My name is Jim McAvoy. I happen to be the commander of the American Legion Post 7 here in town. And I want to recognize my fellow veterans here. And I know uh, Comrade Ernie Smith here is videotaping it for young Luke. And um, a couple of months ago, uh, Luke approached us, maybe a year ago now, he approached us about giving him some financial help for this uh, project. And when I saw him this morning, I'm, I'm telling you, I'm very impressed with young Mr. Wilson. He's one of those kids that you certainly meet and you like right off the bat. But I, I'm really impressed with the diligence 
of this project. And I didn't realize the magnitude of this project until I looked at those books this morning. So if you get a chance, look at those books this morning. And he says to me that he wanted this low-key, he wanted this kept kind of quiet, and I'm sure he really appreciates the fact that you are all here. But he's talking about some of his friends had their honor courts in different locations within the town. And he said, yeah, I wanted to have it here. And I said, what more, uh, what place could be more appropriate if that he's honoring veterans to have his Eagle Honor Court here at the VFW where we have our meetings here and we honor veterans. But I'd like to tell you a quick story about um, Luke's Eagle Scout project and why it's so important to veterans. I have a younger son who's in the Marine Corps and he's stationed over in NATO, over at NATO headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. And he's actually the sergeant of the Marine Corps Honor Guard. He carries the American flag. In the past year, he's had the opportunity to do a number of ceremonies over in Belgium, in Brussels. Some of you might have visited Brussels. I don't know if you have or not, but there's, America, there's a bunch of American cemeteries over there. And he was even struck with the reverence of the ceremonies that he was invited to, to participate as an American citizen. That we have American soldiers, American Marines, American sailors, buried in foreign countries, and their graves are all meticulously maintained, they're meticulously cared for, they're marked with their names, the dates of their death, the dates of service, and here he is thousands of miles away. And he goes to these ceremonies and he's so impressed with it, and that's why I was so impressed with Luke's project when he came to us. Some people might look at it and say it's just a grave, it's just a marker. Fortunately, my parents are still here. My father served in Korea. He flew on a bomber in Korea. Um, both of my sons were in the military. I served, and um, I haven't experienced the fact that I've had to, 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 to get put together a marker or a gravestone yet. But Luke took the opportunity to come to us and say, I want to recognize the town's veterans. I want to recognize them by honoring them, by marking each one of their graves with one of these little medallions. You know, you look at this little medallion and you say, nah, it doesn't look like anything, it doesn't mean anything. But to somebody whose family member is lying underneath that stone with that American flag on it, with the grave marker, this means more to that family than you could possibly ever imagine. And I don't want to bring up any sad thoughts or anything like that, but maybe some of you feel that same way right now. If you go to a parent's grave, or you go to a grandparent's grave, or somebody who served in the military, it's very important that it's, it's honored. It's very important that we honor anybody, obviously, that passes away. But when you go to a foreign country and you see that our graves are marked with the same reverence that we do here. And that's why I was really impressed when Luke came to us. I'm looking at those books back there, and I'm like, my God, just the work that went into it. And I'm sure that there's a few families in here that are very appreciative of what Luke did. And I want to say to these young men right here that, that I've been a police officer for 30-something years. I was a police officer in this town, and um, I've since retired. But I've done a lot of work with students and a lot of work with kids in the high school. I've done a lot of work with veterans organizations. This young man is a role model for you right there. The work that he put into this is going to be felt in this town and felt through the veterans for years and years and years to come. So when you, maybe someday you might decide that you want to do an Eagle Scout project, look no farther than what you have right in front of you. This man right here, I'm so impressed with, and we all are impressed with. You wouldn't believe all the veterans in our post that were so impressed with Luke and the fact that he came to, uh, to want to do this. So I don't want to take any more time. But I want to thank you for presenting me with this medallion because this means more to me than most of the stuff that I do for the veterans in this town and I've been the commander for the post for a long time. And actually I'm going to Flanders Field in March to visit my son and I'm going to visit the cemeteries as he participates in another ceremony. And I'm going to carry this coin with me as a remembrance of all my brothers and sisters here in the town of Easton and in honor of Luke. And I just want to congratulate Luke on behalf of all the members of our post and the VFW and all the members of uh, all the veterans in town. I know Corey Ahone, and he was the town's veteran service officer. He couldn't be here this morning, and he wanted me to pass on his heartfelt condol uh, not condolences, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm telling you, I'm getting tongue-tied here, so I probably should sit down. Uh, but uh, 
congratulations, young man. Your hard work is going to be, like I said, I, I can't say enough. Your hard work is going to be felt in this town for many, many, many years to come. So I'm sure Luke's going to get into some of the details on his project, but there's some, how many uh, cemeteries, like 40? 33. 33, and some of them have just one or two graves that you literally had to find, and these kids were out in a lot of rain doing this project and uh, bad weather, so uh, to tell you a little bit more about his scouting career is Jim Abatey, who's our assistant scout master, and also his eagle coach. Hi, everybody. <clears throat> I want to congratulate one of the Walshes on a very important milestone in life. Kate, congratulations on receiving your driver's license uh, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> but actually, I'm here for Luke. First, let me say that Luke wasn't one <clears throat> to be doing a lot of foolish things when he was out and about in his scouting adventures. He wasn't one to cut down live trees or climb onto the roof of the gymnasium where we meet or to carry out... Um, on scout trips, numerous knives that were eight inches or length or longer. Um, Luke was a pretty level-headed kid, and I find it hard to really roast him. Um, so I'm going to just talk about Luke. Uh, we'll try, but uh, Luke's early scout days started way back with uh, Allison Lambert, uh, Den 3, Pack 193. Uh, and he, uh, as he went through uh, the uh, Cub Scouts and went from Tiger and graduated to Weeblos, and eventually crossed over to us on, in Troop 193 in 2011. Seems like a long time ago. Then he was only about that tall. Now look at him. From the beginning of his scouting tenure, Luke liked to be in the outdoors. Some of Luke's favorite scouting excursions include Mash Market, which, by the way, will never be the same without the potato cannon. Uh, <clears throat> I don't know what kind of wildlife eats uh, raw mashed potatoes, but... <laughs> Uh, they certainly ate well when Wilson's came. Um, I think that's where he learned how to build a campfire, though I'm not sure because all I really remember was a potato cannon. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if um, he ever learned to use um, a can opener. It's one of those scouting skills, um, learning to use a can opener. Um, he certainly was uh, stabbing it quite a bit with a knife, so. I, have you ever learned how to use a can opener? <laughs> Only recently. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing uh, with trips to Washburn Island, uh, canoeing out to the camp in the island, playing, swimming in the beach uh, with the other scouts, harvesting clams and fish uh, for the evening dinner, those were a lot of fun for Luke also. And, of course, fall camping on Nantucket, the football games. Uh, most of the adults went to um, watch the football games. Uh, <laughs> in the beach, in the bike rides along the island, in a dump as the islanders call it, telos, take it or leave it, had all the great things, and water buffalo in the fields at dusk with other, with other guys. TL store where he did a lot of winter camping, and uh, I guess um, according to um, his dad, um, they're not asking them back because of the bonfire that his father built, who was very incorrigible. I don't know how you kept him under control, Luke. Um, <coughs> skiing at Ragged Mountain where we uh, slept on the bunkhouse floor was always a lot of fun. Uh, but the best was a summer camp for Luke. Swimming, canoeing, archery, shooting, earning merit badges, a lot of rain, only taking one shower a week, all the great stuff. <laughs> and whittling. At summer camp, Luke decided to carve a piece of soap into a, into a, 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 a knife. I don't know, <laughs> well, excuse me, with a knife. I don't know if he was trying to make a gun to escape with, but uh, he got, all he got was a table full of ivory snowfla snowflakes. In these times in scouting, that helped make Luke the uh, scout he became. Luke was always fun to have on these trips. He made lifelong friends and helped make memories that he and his fellow scouts will take with them through life. Scouting gives you the chance to experience a lot of things. <clears throat> Too many to mention here, but it really builds character. And for his grand finale, he did a hell of an eagle project. There were over 33 burial grounds in Easton over 7,000 graves that had to be viewed. He found 200 more veterans' graves that had been unregistered. Luke categorized all the veterans' graves in the database 
and he identified and marked each grave with that marker that you were just shown so that they could be found easily in the future to uh, flag them. But then there was a little touch, a little nuance that went beyond the project that was distributing the planting of approximately 3,000 daffodil, daffodil bulbs at each grave. This was the talk of the town for a couple of weeks while they bloomed. That little extra meant a lot to the town folks. What I found most attractive in Luke is his desire to help and serve others. Luke makes it a point to put others first. This is a trait in kids these days. This is a rare trait in kids these days, but not so rare in the scouting community. Scouting taught him responsibility and helped him to be a better person. I think it helped Luke with his teaching skills also. I think he showed us that you don't have to be the person in the limelight to get all the attention. You can be the person in the background that just gets things done. In high school, Luke excelled in his studies and was admitted to the National Honor Society. <coughs> Luke was on a cross-country team for four years and still found time for scouting. The University of Rhode Island is lucky to have Luke where he is studying electrical engineering. And again this summer, Luke will teach chemistry at the College Academy at Stonehill College. Congratulations, Luke. Great Eagle Project. When a boy becomes a scout, there is within him something we call the spirit of scouting. The single lighted candle represents that spirit. Because the spirit of scouting embodies the principles of the scout oath and law, it becomes a sh a shining beacon of inspiration. Scouts and scouters, please stand and recite the scout oath with, oath with me. On my honor, I'll do my best to do my duty to God and my country, to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. You may be seated. These three candles at the top represent the scout's duty to God and country, his duty to others by helping them at all times, his duty to himself to stay physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. You can see how the light from the spirit of scouting begins to grow and become brighter. In scouting, as, most as in most activities in life, there are rules. The rules of scouting are found in 12 points of the scout law. Each is an important foundation of, in the building of a strong character. As each candle is lit, let us pay attention to the words and redicate ourselves to the principles contained in these words. Uh, scouts, you can come up and... trustworthy. A scout tells the truth. He keeps his promises. Honesty is a part of his code of conduct. People can always depend on him. A scout is loyal. A scout is true to 
his family, friends, scouts, leaders, community, and nation. A scout is helpful. A scout willingly shares duties with his fellow scouts and with his family at home. He must be prepared at any time to save a life or help injured people. He willingly volunteers to help others without expecting payment or reward. A scout is friendly. A scout is friend to all. He is a brother to other scouts. He <coughs> seeks to understand others and respect those whose customs are different than his own. A scout is courteous. A scout is polite to everyone regardless of age or position. He knows that good manners make it easier for people to get along. A scout is kind. A scout treats others as he wants to be treated. He understands there is strength in being gentle. He does not harm or kill anything without good reason. A scout is obedient. The scout follows the rules of his family, school, and troop. He obeys the law of his, fam of his community and country. He follows directions from his elected troop leaders, scout leaders, coaches, and other adults who have responsibly for, his, who have responsibly for his education and safety. The scout is cheerful. The scout is an optimist. He looks at the bright side of life. He cheerfully does the tasks that, that, the task that come his way. His pos positive attitude makes him fun to be with. Uh, a scout is thrifty. A scout works to pay his way to help others. He saves for the future. He protects and conserves natural resources. He uses his time and property wisely. A scout is brave. He has the courage to face the dancing spirit of fear and to stand up for the right against the coaxings of friends or the jeer of threats of enemies. And defeat does not doubt him. A scout is clean. A scout keeps his mind and body fit and clean. He chooses the company of others who live by high standards. He helps keep his home and community clean. A scout is reverent. He is helpful in his religious duties. He respects the beliefs of others of different religions. You can go sit down. <laughs> Will the honor guard? Wait, actually. Actually, no. All right. <laughs> the pathway to Eagle can be described as a steep trail leading to up to three peaks, the highest being Eagle Scout. Officially, his trail started with the Tenderfoot rank and continued through second and first class ranks. Then the mountain began. The path was marked by leadership responsibilities, service projects, merit badges, and the practice of scout skills and ideals. The first peak reached was Star Scout. The second peak was Life Scout, and finally, Eagle Scout. Will the Honor Guard, Anthony Khaleesi, and Christina Cola please, please escort Luke's parents to the front. It's my pleasure to introduce Maria and Rob Wilson. Members of the troop will now tell us a story about Luke Wilson's Trail to Eagle. Uh, the ranks.
scout. I am the scout. This badge is worn when I first joined scouting and represents the International Brotherhood of Scouts. The Tenderfoot badge is the first rank a, a scout receives. It stands at the foot of the Eagle Trail. A scout wouldn't stay a Tenderfoot for very long. Once he's inspired by the spirit of scouting, by putting a few simple achievements behind him, he will shortly climb to the, the rank of second class. Second class. The requirements for second class become more difficult. A scout must learn to be self-sufficient in the outdoors and continue to render service to others. Now the scout is ready for the challenge to attain first class. First class. Class. While polishing his camping skills, the scout also develops leadership skills at the patrol level on the way to first class. Planning and organizing skills are important to help his patrol function smoothly. Upon completion of advanced camping and first aid skills, the scout is awarded first class rank. Star Scout. A broad field of merit badges awaits the first class scout. More than 100 merit badges guide the scout to explore careers, hobbies, and commu community interest items. He needs at least six to conquer the Star Scout Summit through leadership, service, and achievement. He conquers the first of three great peaks along the Eagle Trail. Life Scout. The trail to the Life Scout Peak is not easy. There's leadership to demonstrate, service to others, helping fellow scouts to advance, and five additional merit badges to master. The higher the scout climbs, the few travelers he meets along the trail. Yet there are no impossible barriers along the way. This life scout goal can be achieved, but it takes real effort. Eagle Scout. The path to Eagle accumulates at the highest summit, the one most difficult to reach. Along with finishing 21 merit badges, 13 of which are required for Eagle, the scout must provide leadership for his troop and be respected as a role model by the younger scouts by being an individual of an exceptional character. His Eagle project must be one that benefits the community and demonstrates his ability to plan, organize, and lead to, a, to completion a project that involves his troop and other volunteers. Only with the greatest persistence and courage can the scout gain the thrill of victory that comes from looking back down the trail from the very top of the Eagle Summit. Thank you, Jason. Let, now, I'd like to call up Assistant Scout Master, Mr. Patrick, to for a speech. Good morning, everybody. I'm I'm Chris Patrick. I'm the one of the Assistant Scout Masters, and I'd like to read you a poem titled 100 Scouts. It is it interesting to note that of the leaders of this nation in business, religion, military service, and politics, three out of four were scouts. Many found their vocation through merit badge work and scouting contacts. Of 100 boys to become scouts, 30 will drop out the first year. Some may regard this as failure, but later in life, all of them will remember they were scouts and speak well and highly of their experience. Each of the hundred will learn something from scouting. Approximately half will serve in the military in varying degrees and profit from their scout training. Those who make Eagle Scout are sought after by the military academies because they have already established and demonstrated strong leadership. At least one will use scouting skills to save another person's life and many will credit them with saving their own. 17 out of 100 will later become scout leaders and give leadership to thousands of additional boys. Only four out of 100 will reach the rank of Eagle Scout, and at least one will later say he values his Eagle Scout achievement over his college degree. So the rank of Eagle Scout is a big deal. It is recognized the world over as something very special. 
An Eagle Scout is looked upon as an achiever and someone with an exceptional character. He has the best that scouting has to offer. When a young man sits for an Eagle Board review, the board is interested in more than his merit badges or his service project. They want to know how he thinks, what his priorities are, and what he has learned from the process, what his attitudes are towards scouting, and what values he lives by. From this interview and other character references, they make their decision. They really do want to know if he has been following the scout oath and law in his everyday life. 100 Scouts. This time I'd like to bring Patrick Wilson, Luke's cousin, to come up to administer the Eagle Charge. So hello everyone, my name is Patrick Wilson. I'm Luke's cousin and similar to Luke, I've been an Eagle, I've been a Boy Scout since day one. We both started as Tigers. And I was really pleased when Luke asked me to come and minister to him the Eagle Charge. And we're both pretty similar, being that we were both Boy Scouts, and what do you know? He chose the same college as me, and now we both go to the University of Rhode Island. <laughs> so Becoming an Eagle Scout is a great accomplishment. Being an Eagle Scout is a great responsibility. As an Eagle Scout, the Scout Oath and Scout Law should take on new meaning to you. The motto and slogan take on new urgency. As an Eagle Scout, your first obligation is to live with honor. You are marked as a man, a leader. For good or bad, people will follow the example you set. Give up anything before you give up your reputation and good name. As Shakespeare said, mine honor is my life. Both grow in one. Take honor from me and my life is done. Let the white of the eagle badge remind you of honor. Your second obligation as an Eagle Scout is to be loyal. As a follower, you promise to be loyal to those above you. Now, as a leader, you must also be loyal to those below you, treating them with as you would want to be treated. And you must also be loyal to your ideals, not letting others sway from your course. Let the blue of the eagle badge remind you of loyalty. Your third obligation as an Eagle Scout is to be courageous. Stepping into your new role as a leader, you will face many challenges and obstacles. You must have the courage to do what is right, no matter what other people say, do or say. Let the red of the eagle badge remind you of courage. Your fourth obligation is to serve others. For a leader is above all a servant. Let the practice of the daily good turn lead you to a lifetime of service. For only in giving of yourself do you give anything of value? Just as it always has, let the scroll on your badge remind you of service. Your final obligation as an Eagle Scout is to have vision. As a leader, you must now blaze your own trail. Just as a bald eagle soaring high above, the ground can look far into the distance, so too must you look far into the future. Many people will follow you. Only with vision will you lead them in the right direction. Let the silver eagle hanging from your badge remind you of vision. These are obligations as an Eagle Scout. Honor, loyalty, courage, service, and vision. By meeting these obligations, you can lead your troop, your community, and your nations toward a better tomorrow. As our court of honor began this morning, you join with your fellow scouts in repeating the scout oath. Now, you will stand alone and repeat a new oath, the Eagle Scout promise. Though the words you say are similar to those you've said so many times before, they will, have, they will mean more to you than they have ever have. When you pledge yourself on the second honor, 
you will be sealing your oath with the words that close the Declaration of Independence. I'd now like all Eagle Scouts in the audience to stand at this time and rededicate themselves by repeating the Eagle Scout promise with our new Eagle Scout. Please make the Scout sign and repeat after me. Please make the scout sign and repeat after me. I reaffirm my allegiance. I reaffirm my allegiance to the three promises of the scout oath. To the three promises of the scout oath. I thoughtfully recognize. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself. And take upon myself the obligations and responsibilities. The obligations and responsibilities of an eagle scout. Of an eagle scout. On my honor, I will do my best. On my honor, I will do my best to make my training an example. To make my training an example. My rank and my influence. My rank and my influence count strongly for better scouting. Count strongly for better scouting and for better citizenship. And for better citizenship in my troop. In my troop. In my community. In my community. And in my contacts with other people. And in my contacts with other people. To this, I pledge my sacred honor. To this, I pledge my sacred honor. Congratulations, Luke. You are now an Eagle Scout. Fun stuff. Eagle Scout Luke Wilson, you are to be congratulating for reaching the highest peak of Eagle Trail. Your diligence and hard work have paid off. Please escort your parents as far distance up the rest of the hill <laughs> for the presentation of your Eagle Badge. The symbol of your success is the Eagle Badge, which we now present to your mother. Make sure it's now right here. Mm -hmm. Stick them good. Yeah. With pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always wanted to stick them. <laughs> I've heard that one before. <laughs> Glasses. I think I need them. <laughs> As representative of the troop, I will now present you with an eagle neckerchief and slide. Recognition of the wisdom, guidance, and support given to you by your father. Please present him with the eagle pin. So we'll be aware of the honor.
finally, in recognition of the love, lots of patience and guidance given by your mother, please pin the eagle mother's pin on your mom. It says, present pin and hug. <laughs> all capital letters here. <laughs> At this point, it's my honor to present Troop 193's new Eagle Scout, Luke Wilson. All right, so now we're going to do some readings. <coughs> First, I'd like to call Tim McGrath, our assistant scoutmaster. All right. All right, so first, uh, this is a letter from the president and the chief scout executives of scouting. Dear Luke, congratulations. You are now an Eagle Scout. In completing all the requirements, you've mastered many valuable skills and made the Scout Oath and Law part of your life. What you've accomplished is impressive. It's also pretty rare. Fewer than seven out of every hundred Boy Scouts ever achieved this rank. It means you've dedicated yourself, put in the hours, and most important, found ways to benefit your community. Remember that your name now appears on an exclusive list whose members have excelled in fields from business to government to education. The common trait you all share is leadership. We're counting on you to aim high and continue leading by your service and example. Again, congratulations and best wishes for many more successes. Sincerely, Randall Stevenson, President, and Michael Serbaugh, Chief Scout Executive. And there's also a uh, certificate. Boy Scouts of America is proud to award the rank of Eagle Scout to Luke Gerard Wilson, Troop 193, Northeastern Mass, in recognition of successful completion of all requirements for scouting's highest rank. So. We've got a nice Eagle box right here for all your stuff, oh, all your memories from the troop. Next, I'd like to bring up Selectman Dottie Fulginetti for a presentation. Good morning. I'm here on behalf of the Board of Selectmen to read a greeting that we've sent, a uh, greeting and congratulations to uh, Luke Wilson. Dear Eagle Scout Luke Wilson, we are honored to and congratulate such a special young man, Luke Wilson, who has achieved his goal of becoming an Eagle Scout. We're very aware of how much time and effort goes into reaching this rank, and we want to personally commend you for your efforts. You have achieved a goal that few others will reach, and you will look back on your scouting experience with great pride in years ahead. This rank is a testament to your hard work. If you apply the same commitment and motivation in life that earned you the rank of Eagle, undoubtedly you will achieve great things in your future. Your family, friends, fellow members of your troop, and the Boy Scouts of America must be incredibly proud of your hard work and dedication. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, we congratulate you and send best wishes for your continued success. And I've signed this on behalf of our board. I'd like to call up Senator Walter Timoley to read a resolution. Oh, and Senator, Senator Brady, do it. Boy, Adam, nice to see you. Good morning, and obviously congratulations. Congratulations really for our Eagle parents. Thank you very much. Uh, it's my <coughs> privilege to be here on behalf of our Representative Claire Cronin, of course, in conjunction with Senator Brady to honor Luke. Now, scouting is one of the finest institutions we have in this great country of ours. And of course, the United States military is obviously our protector, makes guarantees that we're the home of the, home of the free and the brave. And Luke, what you've done to honor our veterans 
both today and preserve their legacy as a great legacy of your own. So thank you very much. Uh, Representative Cronin introduced this resolution and invited Senator Brady and I to sign on as co-sponsors. And uh, with your permission, of course, with your permission, Luke, Senator Brady and I will uh, jointly read this off. It starts off, uh, whereas Massachusetts General Court resolutions congratulating Luke G. Wilson on his elevation to the rank of Eagle Scout. Whereas Luke G. Wilson will be elevated to the rank of Eagle Scout at a court of honor to be held on Saturday, January 5th, 2019 at the VFW in the town of Easton. And whereas... Oh, my glasses are in there. So. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Maybe I'll jump back in. I'll, I'll jump back in. Please forgive me. <laughs> whereas the virtues of leadership, patience, and perseverance can be seen in many of Luke's accomplishments, not most notably in his Eagle Scout award. And whereas Luke has brought great honor to himself and his family, Troop 193, the Boy Scouts of America, his community, and the Commonwealth. Therefore, be it, and Luke, if you could step forward for our finale here, please. Thank you. And therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts Great and General Court hereby congratulate Luke G. Wilson on his elevation to the rank of Eagle Scout and further extend to him its sincere best wishes for continued success in all his future endeavors. And be it further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be forwarded by the Clerk of the House of Representatives and the Massachusetts State Senate to Luke G. Wilson. This has been signed by our House, in our House of Representatives by our Speaker of the House, Robert A. DeLeo, uh, House Clerk Stephen T. James. In the Senate, it has been signed by our Senate President, Karen E. Spilka, Luke. Uh, Senate Clerk William F. Welch, offered by Representative Claire D. Cronin, myself, Walter F. Timulty, and Michael Brady. And of course, it's great to be here with our colleague in government, uh, Selectman Dottie Fulginetti. So thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So I, though I didn't bring my glasses, I'm going to speak directly from the heart. I, w I was honored to be a Boy Scout as well. <clears throat> to all the Eagle Scouts here, I didn't come close to becoming an Eagle Scout, but one of our presidents, Gerald Ford, was an Eagle Scout. And it's an honor to be a part of this, and I have never forgotten my scouting. I can remember camping out at Miles Standish Park down in Plymouth and cleaning a, a pan of spaghetti sauce with ice-cold water. <laughs> and I'll never forget, but I, I still have my scout manual. And I'm very honored to be a scout. And one of you here could be in public office if you choose to do so, because we need, as we, we've seen, we're very fortunate in the, in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts we work together, Republicans and Democrats, but we don't see that across our nation. And we need new leaders to run for public office to get involved. So one of you here can be a, a leader, whether it be in your local community. And, and again, thank you for doing all you've done for our veterans. I've served on the Veterans Committee, and it's, it's very honorable that you've done what you've done for our veterans because we wouldn't be here to assemble in a free assembly without the service of our veterans. My mother and father are buried down at Otis Air Force Base. My father was in World War II, and my grandfather was in World War I, and, and I have cousins and so forth that served in Vietnam, and we are very fortunate that we are here to assemble in a free assembly, if not for our veterans. So thank you, Luke, so all you've done, and Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, we are very honored that you've done a great job as parents, and thank you to all your uh, Raising Luke as a good young man in that community. So, God bless you all, and thank you to everyone here. God bless you. Thank you very much. So, the thing I got out of that from Senator Brady was that he still considers himself a scout. So, I think that says a lot right there. So, I appreciate that. Come on up, Luke. So as Scout Masters, this is something I like to do for my Eagle Scouts. The Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Officer of the Governor, in honor of Luke J. G. Wilson. This flag was flown over the United States of America at the state capitol on December 20th, 2018, in your honor. At this time, we're going to hear the man of many words give a speech. You know him well, Adam. Yes. There you go. <laughs> I 
All right, so hi everyone. I'd like to begin by thanking each and every person that helped me on this long and difficult road to the Eagle Scout. Um, Mr. Abatey, who helped give me direction on the Eagle Project. Troop 193, whose support made the burden of my project that much lighter. The Lions Club and the VFW for being supportive of me and making generous donations to my project. Mr. Kempner, whose commitment to scouting and the kids in his troop is truly admirable. And the veterans who fought and died so that our country can be as great as it is today. And of course, all of you for showing up today. Uh, and last, but certainly not least, my parents, who you can always count on to kick my ass when I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, <laughs> Uh, in addition to this, uh, I would like to again ask all the veterans who are in attendance to please stand so we can give them another round of applause. Uh, my first adventure with Troop 193 certainly began with a bang, to say the least. I decided to attend the infamous Nantucket trip one that was and always will be my favorite trip to have attended. I was riding my bike when, out of nowhere, I fell, only to have my hand run over by the biker who was right behind me. <laughs> Suffice to say, that moment is what sealed my decision to join the troop. I vividly remember being bored of Cub Scouting and the dependence on adults that the program came with, so, th so this was already a great change of pace for me. The day of the long bike trip came, and I decided to go on the 18-miler at the age of 11, <clears throat> Sorry, wanting to prove that I was as strong as the older kids. And I finished it, leaving me feeling proud of myself and wanting more of the Boy Scouting experience. That trip led to many more, one of which consisted of sleeping in the back of a box truck with my patrol, as I'm sure Nick remembers. It should be said that my patrol had a tendency to drive Mr. Peoples wild, especially with sleeping in Jack Pretentis's 12-man tent, which we had conveniently forgotten our other tents. Uh, another more recent memory for me was sleeping in the woods in October, and uh, me, Sean Walsh, and Kevin Walsh um, ate uncooked spaghetti because we were too lazy to actually cook it. <laughs> uh, uh, on another trip that I attended, I remember waking up at the bottom of my tent because, for whatever reason, don't ask me why, we had decided to pitch the tent on a hill. I spent most of my night trying to climb to the top, only to slide all the way back down to the bottom again. <laughs> that same trip was the origination of the infamous skit, Kids for Cars, which I'm sure some of you remember. Uh, that was crafted by my friend William Carrister, um, a sort of legendary figure in the troupe, and I'm happy to say that I was able to take part in that. Uh, then there was also summer camp where I learned what true suffering was as I partook in the life-saving merit badge. Uh, I like to think, think that this badge had the largest impact on my life out of them all. It taught me what perseverance and true difficulty was and what Boy Scouting was all about, building character, becoming a better person, and learning life skills. It truly turns boys into, who simply want to have fun into men who know how to have fun but also know how to be, how to be safe and practical doing so. Unfortunately, as the years went by, I lost some of that spark for Boy Scouting that I initially had as life got in the way. High school, cross country, and other activities often got in the way as camping faded into the back of my mind. It took me a few years to recognize once more what Scouting meant to me as an individual and the impact that it had on my character. Deciding what I wanted to do with my Eagle Project was a task in of itself, however, as I lacked direction. Thankfully, Mr. Abatey was there to help guide me along the way. Thanks to him, I decided that I wanted to honor the veterans, and as a result, my grandfather, Walter Wilson. Through my project, I realized just how little respect that the veterans receive after they're gone, as they become just another headstone in an endless cemetery. My dad and I found cemeteries for Revolutionary War veterans behind people's houses and at the ends of streets that I had never even heard of. Knowing that I helped these average men who fought for our country be remembered is truly enough for me. And on that note, I would like to once more thank everyone who helped me with my project and all veterans, whether they're here or not. Being a Boy Scout has truly been a journey for me, and the Trail of the Eagle was certainly not an easy one. It had many peaks and valleys, rivers to ford, and rock faces to climb, but once I reached the summit of the highest peak, I could look over all that I had accomplished and see over the horizon to where I began. I truly hope that more people can experience that as I have. Once you're an Eagle Scout, you're always an Eagle Scout. Thank you. I'd also like to do my mentor pins at this time, and I'd like to call out my Uncle John and Mr. Abatey, um, yeah, John Wilson. Um, uh, even like right before I 
we started this court of honor, he was giving me advice on how to deliver my speech. And all throughout last winter, he was like giving me like way, new ways to look at the world. So I really appreciate that. And then Mr. Abadie was just like, he provided a lot of clarity for me in deciding what I wanted to do for my EO project. It was really just a great mentor for me overall. So if uh, both of you could just come up and I'll give you your pens. Thank you. Congratulations, Luke. Thank you. So a couple of quick announcements for just the scouts and their families. Next meeting is on Tuesday. We'll be finishing up your cyber trip badges and also planning for the January 18th to 21st trip to Camp Moses. So please be there for that. Tomorrow is the Christmas tree pickup. Uh, for the town, so if people don't know, we raise money by picking up the trees and bringing them to the DPW, and they put a donation on the uh, tree for us as a fundraiser for the two Cub Scout packs and the two troops in town. Uh, so anybody that can help that has a truck, or if they just want to help and get into one of the vehicles, be at the DPW at 8 a.m. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our quote of honor. Congratulations to Troop 193's newest Eagle Scout and his proud parents. Please stay a while and join us for refreshments. Remember, Scouts are courteous. See you patrol leader. Please stay chat. Color Guard advance. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand while the colors are retired. Color Guard, retire the colors. Thank you for coming. Um, you may be seated, and also there's food. I think uh, I really, there's nothing really. Dr. Luke.